And one of the guys in the forestry world who has done that is doing it as a legacy. His father is a member of the Hall of Fame. Uh, his name, his father's name is Pat Terry. I'm going to give you all three guesses who we're talking about. <laughs> we're, we're, we're first talking about Pat Terry Jr. Uh, when I went to Orlando, Pat was the guy who taught me how to play the hoop to do review. You I remember that. Pat has uh, been at Disney World for many, many years, but he's got a long and story career before Disney World, and uh, now he's at the Hoop to Do Review, 8,500 performances more or more, still entertaining people, and uh, he's he's at some point in time going to say goodbye. I know that's January of next year, and while we have a chance, we wanted to make sure that his father's wish for his son was looked upon. So uh, we're going to show you a little video here, and we want you to enjoy a little bit about the career of Pat Terry Jr. In the contemporary world of commercial music, the term successful professional tenor banjoist can be applied to a very small number of people. After a literal lifetime of commitment to his instrument, his music, and his audience, Pat Terry Jr. is one such individual. Born Patrick Theriault Jr. near Boston in 1951, Pat's musical destiny seemed predisposed as his father was already a nationally known banjo player. Such obvious fate, however, often needs a nudge. So when Pat Sr. would leave the house, it was with strict orders to his young son that he not touch the banjo. The spot-on reverse psychology worked, and within a few years, Pat Jr. was accomplished enough to join his dad on stage. Although a professional pairing of father and son seemed a logical direction, Pat Sr. knew the importance of his son making a name for himself. By the age of 10, Pat Jr. was appearing as a soloist on Boston area radio and television programs. In 1962, as his dad appeared at Radio City Music Hall in New York, an 11-year-old Patrick Theriault Jr. appeared on the nationally televised Ted Mack Original Amateur Hour on CBS. Having proven himself on his own while picking up lessons in banjo playing, showmanship, and showbiz from his dad along the way, by the early 1960s, Pat Sr. and Jr. could be seen performing regularly at theme parks, stage shows, civic events, and fairs throughout the Northeast region. When the father and son united for the first of many appearances at the fabled Radio City Music Hall during the 1968 season, a career highlight resulted which burned the indelible image of Pat Terry Sr. and Jr. working as a duo into the mind of the public. On his own, a 1970 vacation to Los Angeles would prove to be serendipitous for Pat Jr. Ostensibly there to relax, a visit to Disneyland would ultimately result in the professional association which would define the remainder of his musical career. Beginning in 1970, Pat performed regularly at Disneyland aboard the Mark Twain Riverboat as part of the Banjo Kings. Pat Sr. soon joined his son at Disneyland, and in October of 1971, the duo was asked to be part of entertainment history as they welcomed guests on the opening day of the Walt Disney World Resort near Orlando, Florida. This 
is the main entrance to the new Walt Disney World. Entertainment here as people come into the Walt Disney World Railroad. Much is to be seen as they pass through these gates, and uh, there's one thing you can say. It's a lot of fun to see Walt Disney characters having fun with all the youngsters that are arriving here from the railroad and the monorail. Now that is fun in Florida Sun. During the decade which followed, Pat and his father were arguably the busiest banjo players in the world. In addition to playing five days per week in the Magic Kingdom, they performed at countless convention shows in the Orlando area during the evening hours. In 1974, Pat Jr. also joined the cast of the Hoop Dee Doo Review, playing two nights per week as part of the Disney show, which currently holds the distinction of being the longest running nightly musical show in history. Between performances, Pat conceived the idea of a diverse and encompassing banjo publication, the result being International Banjo Magazine, a newsstand quality periodical published from 1980 to 1984. Along with his Terry Tapes instructional recordings and publications, International Banjo reflects Pat Terry's ongoing commitment to the banjo world, a dedication which extends far beyond the performance stage. After Pat Sr.'s retirement in 1982, Pat Jr. stayed on with Disney, performing at Epcot Center as part of the Pearly Kings and Queens while continuing his regular two-night-per-week stand at the Hoop de doo Review. In 2002, after decades with the show, Pat Terry Jr. was asked to become the principal banjoist with the Hoop de doo Review where after 8,500 performances, he continues to delight guests of the Walt Disney World Resort. Disney employees, known within the company as cast members, are encouraged to dream, create, and inspire within the course of their work. To recognize cast members who fulfill these ideals at the highest level, in 2011, the Walt Disney Legacy Award was established. In the award's inaugural year, Pat Terry Jr. experienced a true career highlight as one of the first recipients of the Walt Disney Company's highest, most meaningful and prestigious honor, the Walt Disney Legacy Award. When describing Pat Terry Jr., the adage like father like son is certainly appropriate. He has admirably carried on his father's high musical and entertainment standards, doing his family's legacy proud in the process. But there is much more. True to his father's wishes, through a career spanning half a century, Pat Terry Jr. has truly made a name for himself, creating his own unique chapter in four-string banjo history. We welcome Pat Terry Jr. to the American Banjo Museum Hall of Fame. Pat. When we put Pat's father into the Hall of Fame back in 2007, uh, Pat wanted to reunite himself with that banjo, and it is truly an honor to have Pat play his dad's banjo for you one more time.
heard me talk before. I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I just want to thank God for talent because we have represented here such an array of talent. It's so humbling to me, and I so appreciate all of uh, all of you being here and being associated with such a prestigious group. And I certainly want to thank my dad for prodding me out through the years, for my family, my wife, son, daughter, grandchildren, all the people that put up with me playing the banjo throughout all the years. But I really thank you all. I appreciate it. You wear me out, and that's that's a lot of work. Just watching. Congratulations, Ben Perry. Thank you. We are so delighted that you're here tonight. And I wanted to point out when you were watching Pat's video, there was a little clip of the Hoopty Doo review, and you saw Pat, and then you saw this little back of the sky's head. They got some keyboard tickling. Randy Morris has added so much to this weekend. Thank you. Thank you.